YouTubers, fellow hams, coming to you from the dark corner of the basement, my man cave, the workbench. And uh, I was messing around with uh, some antenna stuff, and uh, you know, I thought I should really record this because it's kind of interesting. So uh, I've been playing around with magnetic loops, and I made this little, little tiny loop here. And uh, it's not very big. It's actually a, a snare drum head <laughs> for the main loop and a little little piece of wire for the coupling loop. Just fiddling around with a, um, a receive loop and it turned out that it was uh, tunable from uh, 15 meters all the way up to 10 meters. And uh, I set it on my dining room table and I made a contact with it on a, on a 10 meter opening, uh, which just surprised me, you know. Not very efficient because of the size, but it worked. So I thought, I'm going to expand on that idea. I'm going to make a small loop that's uh, multi-turn uh, for a receiving loop. And then I started thinking more about that and I thought, you know what I should do is, uh, you know, maybe six turns or more and then uh, taps so I could uh, tap through it to tune it to different ranges. And uh, if this tuned down to 21 megahertz with a single turn in this cap, um, six turns might get me down to 80 meters. I mean, that would be woefully inefficient, but uh, <laughs> be fun, interesting, you know, use it as a receiving antenna. And if, if it tunes, you know, maybe QRP, try to transmit on it and see if I can make a contact. So that's what I'm working on. I thought I should film this because this might be an interesting project. Um, but to make the, the, the six turn loop, I needed a former of some type, a, a coil form. And I was going to make it out of wood. I've seen people make them with a cross-shaped piece of wood, you know. And I started looking around the basement. What do I have around here? And I found a, a milk crate. And I cut the bottom off the milk crate. <laughs> and there is a uh, about an inch and a half thick um, form, pre-made, right? I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up. But I'll, I'll take some close-up photos so you can see. But right here on the corner... It's a little flat piece of plastic, and so I took a, a hacksaw and I notched it with uh, six notches, each one each quarter inch, or at each quarter inch. And I did that here, and I did that here, and I did that here. And so I'm going to put the wire through those notches to wind my coil, and this will be the big coil, the big loop. And then at the uh, corner, I'm going to mount it on there like this, diamond shape. Uh, I'm going to move that little tuning capacitor forward, and this will fit on there real nice. Um, at one corner, then I'm going to drill. I'll have photos of all of this as I do it, so I'll, have, I'll probably, probably be putting the photos up over the video as I'm talking about it. But what I'm going to do is drill holes here uh, to tap the screws through there and uh, take little ground, um, little ground lugs and put them there to pass the wire through to solder on, and where the screws come out on the inside will be my taps uh, for the coil, and the start and the end point of the coil. So uh, that's what I'll use for that, and for tapping it, I'll just have a little short wire with an alligator clip off the uh, capacitor, so you just move the alligator clip to another tap to change the tuning range of the coil, and uh, or the loop. Um, so that's going to be the main loop, this big diamond-shaped thing, pre-made former. <laughs> And then for the uh, coupling loop, um, I need uh, something roughly one-fifth the size. I was digging around again and I, I found this old food container that had some parts in it. Well, I'm going to put the parts away. But it's a nice uh, square shape. It's about the right size. So I'll cut it, uh, I'll cut it down. I'll wind my uh, coupling loop around that and, uh, and just affix it in there like so. And that will be the form for my uh, coupling loop. Run the coax into a hole in the back and uh, solder it on. And what I'll do to match this is I'll cut four or five slots on each corner of this and wind um, four uh, turns. They won't actually be full turns though. At one corner they'll come down here and they'll stop and I'll, I'll tap through uh, screws and join those all up. So it'll be like a band. It'll just be a, a wide conductive area that matches the width of this. 
so I'll get a nice lined up, you know, the wires will be lined up with each other across the form, um, so it'll couple to that uh, bigger loop more efficiently. So that's the plan, you know, I, I just basically make this stuff up as I go along and see what happens, you know, that's experimenting. Take a, take a basic idea that you know works and expand on it. Try this, try that, see what happens. So that's the current project. Um, I'll film pieces of it while I'm working on it. Um, maybe zoom in for some details on things as I, as I complete them and we'll, uh, we'll put this all together into a video and then uh, when it's all done we'll do some measurements of the loop uh, with the antenna analyzer and uh, with one of the radios. And uh, I might even try transmitting with it and see if we can uh, do a QSO with a, a little desktop magnetic loop that you could uh, set on a bookshelf next to your uh, radios or uh, on a corner of a table in your kitchen and, and uh, work some DX perhaps when uh, there's thunderstorms going by. Who knows? So that's what I'm doing. Let's see how it works out. If you don't have one of these, get one little hand drill, little finger drill. These are really nice for precise work. Look what I've done on this uh, center coil, the uh, coupling loop, I've, I've measured off and marked off every quarter inch uh, for my six turns. Now what I'm doing with this little finger drill, because I can be very precise with it, I get right on the mark, right at the edge of the bend, a little piece of wood, so I can start to cut that hole. I can be very precise with my control and it just takes a few twists and I'm through. And then I angle it so that the wire can go through at an angle and I turn it as I'm backing it out and I've now got a nice little hole in that direction that I'll be able to feed wire through and then I'll drill six more on this side and the wire will come out and go over to this side and through that corner and through that corner. So, get one of these. They are handy. Get a better picture of it. I think you can get them at model shops. Radio control model shops. Um, they sell them. They're super nice. They have uh, a little chuck in here and this unscrews and you can flip it over and there's a smaller size and then in the in the handle you have storage and there's another chuck with a large end, a slightly smaller end. That's really small. That's for teeny tiny drills like the width of a human hair. So I have used this thing in all kinds of projects where I need to do some precise drilling. So there you go. That's a tip. And uh, you can see I cut that uh, lid or that container down to where it's the right depth to fit inside the uh, basket. And uh, going to drill some holes and run some wire and at one of these corners the uh, holes will be a little bit further back because the wire is going to go through the holes and uh, tap to a bus bar that will uh, be where I connect the uh, coax. Well actually no, what I'll do is I'll put, uh, I'll put screws through there and uh, the wires will come to that and terminate and those screws will now be joined there and have a single connection inside for the uh, coax. So, there we go. Well, you want to talk about something that's going to learn, teach your patience. <laughs> Try weaving with wire. So anyway, uh, this is coming right along. Inside there, I've got two uh, ground clips. A little right angle uh, pieces of copper wire that come up and pfft, I soldered the ends of the wires to them and I'm pulling those taut as I as I weave the wire through. I bring it around through the holes I put in the corners and then back in on this side and uh, this is the tricky part getting it uh, somewhat taut and then bending over and crimping onto that wire and then soldering it without melting this plastic so that's uh, delicate work but when it's all done this is the hole where the coax will come in and uh, the uh, coax will just connect to the open lugs on these uh, solder lugs right here and these four holes 
um, that I put in here, the X's are, they correspond to four holes here. And I'll put little uh, uh, wood screws through there to attach that internal loop right there. And then the coax will come through right here in this hole and into there and attach. And that'll be at the top of the loop. So, making progress, weaving wire. I'll tell you what, this takes patience. Okay. Well, there's my coupling loop. My basket weaving is done. Straighten some of these out a little bit. Six wires. Nice and even around the outside. And inside, let's see, there we go. I hope you can see that. I've got them all soldered there. Two uh, lugs right here for the coax to connect to. Got to widen this hole for the coax to come through. And then this will be ready to mount, but I'm not going to mount it yet because I need to wind the big loop. <laughs> this one's going to take a little while, but I got an idea for making it easier. I was thinking about it, you know. Um, I've got notches for the wires around the outside edge, but getting them through the eyelets, because I'm going to use these uh, little ground lugs to make the connections here, um, that might be kind of tough, because that first one's easy. You just run the end of the wire through, but you're going to have uh, a lot of wire <laughs> to go around this thing six times and it has to be a continuous run so you'd have a heck of a lot of wire to spread out on the floor and then thread back through and thread back through so what I'm going to do on these little ground lugs got plenty of them these little things have two holes right I'm going to cut the top hole. Cut a little notch and cut it right through. So all I got to do is lay the wire down into it. I won't have to thread the wire through it. That way I get the uh, screws and the ground lugs mounted and I just wrap the wire around and around and around and around and then go back in and solder the uh, connections after I'm done winding. So I won't have to thread the wire through anywhere. I won't have to thread it through any holes which would be a pain because I've got these notches just cut right here on the edge. I'll just lay it in, pull it taut, pull it taut, pull it taut, all the way around, six turns, and uh, it'll be done. So, that's what's next. I'm having fun. Are you? Here we go. Alright, here's a little detail about what I was talking about. You can see how I cut the uh, top of that thing. So what'll happen is the wire this is too thick. Well, maybe this is what I'll use. I don't know. We'll see. We'll sit down in that slot, and when it's down in that slot, it'll be in that little uh, notch, and then I can solder it right there, and that'll bring the tap through. So I thought I'd give you a little detail <clears throat> on how I'm doing this. You can see the wires come through the slots. I hope this is in focus. It's really hard to tell on this little camera. But you can see the wires come through the slots and they separate, keeps them separated, and then as they come past one of these taps, they move right through that slot. You see I cut the slot there? So I can drop the wire in um, and then I pinch the slot shut and then I solder it. So I got a tap there, I got a tap back here on this one, on this third turn. The fourth turn will tap here, the fifth will tap there, the sixth will tap there, and this will be the end point. Okay, loop's done. Here it is. You can see that's all nice and straight. There's all the taps. Right there. Uh, insert internally in the corner. I hope you can see that. There's all the screws coming through and one wire off the capacitor will have a short alligator clip on it and I'll just clip on to the tap that I want for the frequency range. So, now what's next is uh, removing the experimental hardware, pulling the capacitor out to here, and then uh, mounting this 
on there and uh, mounting the coupling loop on there, hooking up some coax, and the loop's going to be done. We'll be ready to test it. So I might get it done tonight. Well, the loop's pretty much done. Um, the only thing I've got left to do is uh, bring up some coax and uh, hook it up. So uh, that's next. Got to widen the hole in here and bring a coax through, strap it down the back, and I'll probably mount a connector over here. Either a PL259, maybe off the side. No, that'd be in the uh, radiated part of the loop. And I'll bring the coax straight out, and I'll just put a connector out here. Or on the back. No, nah, I'll put a connector on the back. <laughs> See, I make this stuff up as I go along. Anyway, there it is, uh, the tabletop loop. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in here for a detail or two. <laughs> so, on the base, there we go. You can see we've got a tuning capacitor, and yes, that is a, a wheel off of a radio control car. It makes a nice, uh, <laughs> nice way to tune the cap in small increments without getting too close to it, although my hand capacitance will still affect it. That's just what I'm going to use. Oh, but you can see in here we got an alligator clip, and I just move it. So now, well, out here the loop is six turns. Five, four, three, two, and that screw would be one turn. So I can just tap the loop where I want make as many turns as I need it to be. So I'm going to get the coax hooked up and uh, once I got the coax hooked up I'll be able to put the antenna analyzer on it and we'll see what its range is. Let me rotate this around here so you can see. There's the tuning capacitor. Nice little air gap electrolytic back in there. Or air gap cap. And it rotates a full 360 degrees, so if I decide to put a motor on this, I don't have to worry about end stops. So, uh, oh yeah, you can see the alligator clips better that way, too. Yeah, there you go. All right.